Ether changes everything. It changes everything. All of the uh, physics and astrophysics theories that developed after 1930, which was when they threw the ether out prematurely, all those theories are going to crumble and fall if the ether is re-accepted. Okay? And I think it will be because the evidence is coming on this. Uh, so. Here we've got uh, Albert Michelson as a young man, as a naval officer. He is the inventor of the Michelson interferometer, which is the device that is widely used today throughout the sciences for all different kinds of purposes. Uh, this is uh, Dayton Miller, who was the, um, the chairman of physics at Case Western Reserve University. Back then it was called Case School. And uh, he was also the the president of the American Acoustical Society, the president of the American Physical Society, a member of the National Academy of Sciences. He was a mainstreamer on every level. Uh, he had gotten his PhD from Princeton Uni University in, uh, in astronomy where he uh, used his own telescope observations to track the motions of comets and calculate their orbits, uh, their eccentricities and so forth. This was a, a guy who really knew his stuff. And yet today, if you look up the question of ether on internet or in textbooks, he is totally erased from history. And the reason is he got positive results, consistent positive results for the cosmic ether. This is my representation based upon the work of Miller primarily. Miller showed that there's this flowing upwards from the southern pole area to the northern pole area, northern ecliptic actually. Um, and the little X's are the interferometer devices that he, uh, a representation of how you would have with one configuration, the ether would be detected with a very high velocity. And in another configuration with the earth standing as a block to the ether, in this case, the ether doesn't flow through the earth. It has to move around it because otherwise the frictional forces would, uh, would uh, not allow that in any case. So you get a lower ether velocity in one place, a higher ether velocity in other places. And uh, this, this is a little bit of a mystery to the people who still cling to the static immaterial ether theory, which goes back to the Newtonian ideas. Well, let's look at Reich. A blue, he discovered a blue glowing biocosmic energy from, uh, emitted by uh, people, microbes, charging them up also. He argued it was mass-free, something in the atmosphere. Here's a, a, a seed sprouting experiment I did at, at my institute. One example, I did a three-year study on this, at which was published. Um, and you can see that when you sprout seeds in the accumulator, you get this kind of growth. Here's the control group done at the same time, just kept in a thermally balanced cardboard box. Picardi, another one. Here's his model. He made a model of the helicoidal motion of the Earth around the sun through space, showing that in some cases it's not, a, not like screw threads. It's not like a perfect spiral. It's an offset cambered spiral. So you whew, whew, whew.